Okay, so Mama is back. Mama would like to now talk to you about flying oils um, and flying solves. Now, I know a lot of people are out there wondering, you know, why would it, uh, people want to try flying oils and flying solves, okay? For one thing, they may be asking the questions if they know about it. Why would you do that if it, it can be very deadly? Why would you do that if there's danger involved? Because some of the dangers that can be involved is that you can actually, your soul can come out of your body and not be able to return, okay? Not only that, you know, when you're outside of the body, there is a chance that you, you know, you can have some invasion from other spirits, especially dark spirits, that will like to come inside and they will not leave and you'll be trapped on that particular side, wherever you are on the astral realm and you can't come back, you know. So people will ask, why would one want to take that chance? Mostly because I said, most people who do it, and I say, for a positive standpoint, but who am I to say, what's positive, what's negative, you know? From a positive standpoint to me, really, would be somebody who's actually a practitioner, you know, who needs to go to speak to entities to actually help and heal this person on their particular journey or help and heal a soul, you know, that is out there, that's trapped, that's, you know, it could be so many reasons, you know, like I said, most of the people who would actually use flying ointments, flying salts, flying oils would be people like, Sangomas and witch doctors and uh, shamans and witches and warlocks. I mean, to me, all of them are all the same. These are the people who would use these ointments, um, and that and that and that's the reason why. To, mostly, some of the positive reasons is to go in and to help. Some of the negative reasons that's negative to me would be to uh, actually harm someone in the spirit realm. Uh, I have an enemy that's living across town or I have a client that says that I have an enemy that's across town and I want to make their life miserable for whatever reason. Then, you know, a practitioner can actually use flying oil, flying solves, a very skilled practitioner and go out and cause night nightmares, I'm sorry, and actually harm or kill, you know, the particular victim. These may be some negative reasons for some people. Some, depending on how dark the practitioner is, it could be for them a very positive reason. In a lot of cultures, there is no negative. There is no positive. You know what I'm saying? So when you're dealing with, so you can be dealing with some Sangomas that just really have no conscious whatsoever. It's no harm, none theory. It's just do as you will. Okay. Oh, and they always talk about the little thing Alistair Crowley said or whatever. Okay, you know, well, but to us, we may say, hey, you know, he has a point. But for some cultures, it really just, they, they're they not listen, listening to any of those things. You got some places where there are no inhibitions, okay, when it comes to those dangerous places you would not want to go. There are some places, you know, a lot of people say they can't hardly look me in the eye. Look, there are some places where I would advise you not to look. People in the eye, because I couldn't even look them in the eye. So it gets very more darker than spiritual. But um, so you got some cultures where as to there is no black, there is no white, there is no gray, you know. And um, you know, so negative and positive aspects mean absolutely nothing. Um, some other people that use these solves, ointments, oils would be some of your talented people who actually sing and make music produce a lot of those people people don't realize a lot of those people are mediums they are actually being operated by many spirits that come in and out and share different melodies with them uh different lyrics with them you know, you know they could be handed these particular songs or um uh, melodies from so many different dimensions so many time periods something ahead of their time, you know, uh, you can borrow from the future, something uh, from the past, some things that will never, ever be, because there won't be a time that to, 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 to be. And um, a lot of these um, people would have to uh, be inhabited by different spirits, and a lot of people would actually 
do some drugs that are very negative in society, like heroin to get the creativity, acid. You've all heard of those type drugs to achieve, you know, what you can, and cocaine and stuff like that, where, you know, to achieve some things that most shamans get naturally. Okay. I say that loosely. But when you think about it, you know, a lot of people will argue that cocaine is natural. Marijuana is natural. But for the root worker, we would probably achieve this from just something that just really you can grow in your backyard. <laughs> Which you can grow marijuana in your backyard. But stuff like, you know, belladonna and um, other little, you know, you know, roots that they discourage, that they say that is deadly. Believe me, they're telling you something is deadly. You best better believe there's something good in it. They're just trying to discourage you from using it. You know what I'm saying? You know, we can... Um, if we can put fear around them, you know, they'll never know. But they be right there behind that curtain doing the same thing they're telling you not to. But in a sense, it's, it's good not to mess with certain things because, you know, you can form an addiction to some things. So, anyway, I say all of this to say this right here. Um, um, I, let's, let's talk about the landscape of the other side. You know, a lot of people say, well, I want to ask for project. Astral project sometimes can be kind of similar to out of body experiences, but people, some people argue to say that you know, are argue to defer and say that there is a big difference. You know what I'm saying? Um, um, with the astral projection, is is something that just really I don't know. I I, I really don't know because it's it's a very broad subject matter when you get into astral projection, out of body experiences and stuff like that. You know. I could almost say that they are the same, but then I don't know. Because I think with astral projection, you actually raise up and you project yourself outward. Whereas the outer body experience just tend to just randomly happen. You just may find yourself in a whole other place in an outer body experience. You just may just, may not even be putting any effort in at all. Sort of like a trance state. You just be sitting there and you go gone. The astral projection really happens during sleep, a sleep state, mostly sleep state. I may be wrong, but out of body experiences can tend to happen, you know, uh, with people in trance, people who are dancing, uh, who may be possessed by other entities during dance trances and stuff like that, you know, you know, and I think that may be some of the difference, um, uh, whether or not you go to different landscapes or, you know, spiritual scapes and stuff like that. Don't know too much about it. Don't know if the astral um, plane is similar to that same plane as out of body. And they may just all be the same. It just depends on people who've done a lot of thorough research. And there are some places where you can get some thorough research material. I'm only talking about the experience that I've had. Most witches do what you would call, um, um, they would call, we, we would say we had a travel, you know. Um, some would say I had an out-of-body experience, but I think most of us actually fly and travel. That's been my experience. And um, you all can see some of my videos where I've actually talked about my particular travels. Um, would they be an out-of-body what I said it would be uh, astral projection. I know. I think it, it's more or less at will in some cases where I would actually put the salve on my body or the ointment on my body or the oil on my body, which I won't even say ointment. I'm just saying ointment for, for people who know flying, what flying ointment is. For me, it's an oil. What I would do is I take the oil and I would put it in air. You put it in areas where you where there's like mucous membranes because mucous membranes absorb more than skin though some of the intimate areas would be like the lips which i'm not encouraging anything like that or some even like the um lower part of the lid or some people in the um intimate areas like in the vaginal canal you know or in the rectum, or on the tip of the penis to help absorb that oil. And you would only use a little bit. In extreme cases, many have used the salve and just put it all over their body. That is to be discouraged because too much of that particular um, substance, like one of the most popular would be belladonna, can be deadly. You can go out and not come back. So, you know, it don't take but a little bit. 
um, if you know you want to fly, you would put that on you just before you go to sleep. Or just at night during the witching hour between 12 and 3 um, and listening to some trance music, drumming music, and actually go out. My experience, I'm going to talk about a couple of brief experience, experiences because I've been doing it all my life. Even sometimes you don't even, for some witches, that it's not even needed to actually, you know, do that. Some people can go at will. For me, I've always accidentally went. It was like I wasn't planning to, but during a crescent moon, I'll tend to go anyway, whether I want to or not, you know. So I always watch the moon phase. It's something about that crescent moon, right about 20% phase to 15% phase. I'm going to go regardless. But there are some times where I want to go at will, and sometimes I can't. You know, if it's not around that period, I just cannot just go at will. Some people can. Well, it's where I would have to actually use the flying ointment. I got some work I need to do. I need to go ahead and use this flying ointment so I can go and come back. And uh, one, to give you an idea of how it is, you could actually be awake, but at the same time, too, be between dimensions. What I mean is this is, as sure as I'm sitting here talking to you, I can actually be in two places at one time, meaning that spirit moving through, I can hear. I can actually be between two states. Now, that can be kind of scary for a lot of people. And you don't want to hang around that little particular state for too long. That's how some people wind up in the mental hospital because then it, it, gets, it can get difficult to distinguish reality from, you understand, that other space, you know. And a lot of people get stuck there, you know. You want that to be brief as possible. You don't want to be there too long. They kind of get an idea. I know that when I'm in that particular place, that trance, that travel, when I fully wake, because like I'm looking at this door right now, I have a curtain there. Okay? The windows are all closed, so it shouldn't be in the wind in my house. If that curtain is moving, like the door is open and wind is blowing in, and there is no door, no window opening, I know that I am between those places. Because for a lot of people, when you're looking at that particular uh, spiritual scape, astral scape, it looks sort of similar to where you are at that moment. Only thing is some things about it that's different that you can say, I know <laughs> that I'm somewhere else. Even though everything can be set up and arranged, it's going to be something a little bit off, like feeling a wind breeze blowing. You're sitting up in your house with your windows and doors down, and ain't no wind blowing outside. Being daytime, but yet still it looks dark in your house. You know, and you look at your windows and it's dark outside, but you know it's about one o'clock in the afternoon. These are some of the things you can see during trance, during the beginning of an astral travel or whatever, when you're working with some of these substances. Some people can do some extensive work because they get to messing with that big stuff like heroin. That's the big stuff. Opiums and stuff like that. That's the big stuff. You know, um... Even um, some of your little lighter stuff, you know, with your poppy opiums and stuff. I said lighter. Now use that loop because it can be, it can be much more complex. But um, you know, a lot of folks say, "Oh, they on a trip. They tripping, whatever." You know what I'm saying? And these are some of the things that you will experience. You know, seeing some things that you know that there should not be an alligator working, walking upright in your kitchen. And you say, you're saying to yourself, you know, like, what, what's up, what, you know, you know, you're just trying to snap out of it. Now, I haven't seen anything that extreme, but I've talked to some people who've gone that extreme. Most of those people own some pretty heavy stuff. When you're working with roots, it's a little bit more safer. But when you go start going outside, experiment, experimenting with some of your medicinal drugs, with your pharmaceuticals, ooh, it can get bad. You don't want to mess with those kind of things, you know, your street drugs in the street lab. You don't want to mess with those things. That's when the thing can get uh, completely out of control. This is not a video that I can do in one video. So I'll be back to do some more videos, okay?